Hey there friends, thanks for checking in. Today we're going to discuss four handguns that completely let me down. In a big way, these are handguns that I wanted to keep and enjoy for years. And a couple of them started out great, but over time they just didn't work out. So let's take a look. The greatest disappointment I had was from a Smith & Wesson Performance Center Model 19 Carry Comp K-Frame revolver with a 3-inch barrel. The features are great. It has a compensator on the end of the barrel that decreases the recoil. It has a tritium front dot, a adjustable rear sight, rosewood grips, beautiful looking revolver, and when it shot, it was a great revolver. But what happened was the trigger locked. Factory loads, it was off camera, the trigger just locked, the hammer was locked. If I release the cylinder a little bit, that would that would unlock the trigger. But this revolver clearly had a problem. And I'm not a gunsmith. I don't know how to I don't have springs laying around. I don't have a bunch of parts laying around where I could get it all working right and say, oh, I, I fixed it. it. It was something that was foreign to me. The trigger locked up. I've never had this happen on any revolvers that I owned. I was so excited to get this revolver. Loved the rosewood grips. Loved the way it looked. Loved the way it shot when it shot. So what happened was I contacted Smith & Wesson and said, hey, I've got this problem here. It was all through email. I was totally ghosted. And I figured for a revolver of this quality and this price, that it should perform a little better. But I wanted to give them a chance to fix it. That's the fair thing to do. And I was ghosted. And I did not receive a contact back. It was disappointing to me. And I eventually just sent it back to them and said, here, you deal with it. And it was a, a disappointment for me. This was the revolver that I wanted to hold on for a long time. It was the revolver that I felt met all my needs. You know, I love that compensator on the end. And I thought it, it really did decrease recoil. But the way this performed for a performance center, it was a performance letdown. And I was so disappointed that I, I could not I could not wait to get it, then I could not wait to get rid of it. And Smith & Wesson's quality control has really dropped in my opinion, and that's why I'm down on them. And I, I know for a fact I'm not the only one that feels that way. This has been going on for a while, and I think they really need to clean up their act. I've always appreciated Sky for making decent handguns at budget prices. It hits that market where people want a handgun, but they don't want to pay a lot of money. They may just be getting into this, and they decide to go with the Sky. And I've had decent luck, but when they came out with the DVG-1, David versus Goliath, I was excited they came out with their first striker fire handgun, opposed to the hammer fire with the long trigger pull, a flat trigger, and a 10-round magazine. And I thought it was cool. And I wanted to get a hold of one. Well, I got a hold of this, and it was a bit disappointing. First off, the trigger measures right at 6.5 pounds. Sky says it's a 5.5 pound trigger. All right, whatever. The sights were off to the left a little bit. All right, I can live with that too. They are adjustable. But what I can't live with, and what really bothers me, is that the slide will not lock back, even if I force it back like that. It won't lock back. You can see a big gap right there. And 95% of the time, when a Sky handgun has issues, it's with the magazine. And I wish Sky would make the investment, possibly work with Metgar to make better magazines. Because I think the guns function fine. It's just that the magazines are most of the issues that I have seen and experienced. And I think it is with this. Now, if I push this up, you can see the big gap there. If I push it up with my pinky there, it'll lock back. I wanted to love this handgun. I just don't because of this issue. Now, on occasion, at the range, it will lock back, but sometimes it doesn't either. And some may say it's a minor issue, but I don't think so. You know, it's something that we rely on for mag changes. So that's my beef with the DVG-1. Maybe I got a lemon, but... That's what I'm talking about today. It just doesn't function the way it should. I'm a huge fan of Beretta. I love the Beretta handguns. They do a great job. There's no question about that. And I was super excited when they came out with the APX line. I had a couple, shot some friends, and they all performed really well. And I picked up the Beretta APX Carry, the little subcompact 9mm that 
was great. When I first got it, it fired excellent. I was like, this thing is awesome. I love this. And many people said, well, that's just a Nano rebranded. And I said, no, no, this one's actually better. It, it does this, it does that. Well, it sat in a safe for a little while. I took it back to the range and I had nothing but light primer strikes. People said, well, you, you, you should have cleaned out the striker channel. You should have done this. You should have done that. Perhaps that's true. But if a gun is considered a carry gun, which this is, then I think if it sits for a little while, it's going to sit in the holster, that's for sure, you know, until you actually need it, or you decide to take it to the range, the light primer strikes were excessive, to a point where I had zero confidence in the gun. Now, the other APXs that I have owned, and that I currently own, have performed great. So I'm not down on the entire Beretta APX line, and I'm not down on Beretta, but the way that APX carry performed when I took it to the range, I lost all confidence in it. I changed up the ammo. I tried it with other guns, that same ammo, and it worked fine with other handguns. When I put it back into the Beretta APX carry, it was flawed. It was horrible. So I contacted Beretta, had a little issue with their customer service. Okay, it was during COVID time and everything else, but that was another gun I could not wait to get rid of because when you lose confidence on a gun that is supposed to be a carry gun, then that's an issue and there is no way you could carry that or even think that it's going to perform reliable in the future with such a background as continuous light primer strikes. I often consider this Star BM9 a mini high power. Similar controls, steel frame, has a four inch barrel, similar takedown, single stack mag and it's it's a nice handgun when it works the problem i had with this and it started out great i was raving about this i was saying people are picking this up for 200 bucks it's a steal for the everything that it offers with a metal handgun accurate shooting military surplus never in the hands of the civilians it's a spanish gun but i had ejection issues and major league and I tried different types of ammo and so forth, but these ejection issues persisted. And so in order to get this taken care of, I, I would have to here. essentially buy another BM9 and pull out the ejector and put the new one in. I'm not sure there are a lot of replacement parts for these. And it, at 200 bucks, it's kind of a throwaway gun. So that's my beef with the BM9. It started out great. Then all of a sudden, ejection issues. You say, well, why don't you just handle it? Well, I'm, I'm not great at that stuff. I wish I was, but I'm just not. And for me, this is a letdown. Those were four handguns that let me down. The Smith & Wesson Model 19 Performance Center. Awesome features, but it just didn't work out with that trigger locking up. The Sky. DVG-1, nice concept. For some reason, I think I got a lemon. The Beretta APX Carry, started out great. Light primer strikes, just didn't work out. And the Star BM-9. Military surplus, I get it, but I can't trust it. There it is, let me know what you think. If you like videos like this, please subscribe and share. I always appreciate thumbs up button. Thanks for watching and you guys be safe.